South African President Jacob Zuma, who was ousted amid corruption allegations, has thrown his considerable political weight behind a fresh rival to the ruling African National Congress. David Monda, professor of political science at City University in New York, tells me Zuma's Umkonto Wiswizi, or MK Party, which takes its name from the ANC's former armed wing, adds more unpredictability to the coming elections in South Africa. He is, he is very influential. Uh, let's not forget uh, he's a national leader. He's an insider of the ANC. Uh, so during the years of apartheid, uh, these are individuals uh, who, who know the ANC inside out. So his support for, uh, for MK is also very significant, particularly around, uh, you know, the KwaZulu-Natal area and uh, among his uh, Zulu co-ethnics, that sort of uh, voting bloc, uh, he can uh, deliver significant amount of votes away from the ANC. I asked Professor Monda if Zuma is a real threat to the ANC. So Zuma definitely is uh, a veto player, but he is also a kingmaker in his own right. But I do not see him having significant a sway as to be able to deliver enough votes to the opposition, to MK in particular, uh, for them to, to, to take power from the ANC. But he will significantly dent uh, the ANC's uh, capacity to be influential uh, within KwaZulu-Natal, uh, but also, let's not forget that that will also influence the Inkata Freedom Party, because a lot of the votes which might have gone from KwaZulu-Natal to the ANC would either go to um, Zuma's MK or to the Inkata Freedom Party. So it's a really fluid um, um, political situation in South Africa right now, and a worsening economy really doesn't help. The 2024 elections in South Africa are taking place in the context of worldwide crisis. Monda says South Africa's support for Palestinians and its perceived alignment with Russia and China against the Western powers is damaging the country's relations with many countries. But but even in a, if you think about their foreign policy, so the ANC and, and the leaders in, in ANC have really been very critical about the West in terms of their hypocrisy on foreign policy. So they talk about international norms and democracy, but they don't want to talk about it when their allies like Israel abuse human rights and and go against international norms. They only want to do it against their enemies and rivals like North Korea or China, right? So ANC, South Africa saying, you guys are completely hypocritical, and this really comes through in terms of their foreign policy. But, but the blowback with that is then the West will, uh, will punish them in certain respects because they're, they're not towing the line on these foreign policy issues. And they're embarrassing major powers like the U.S. and the EU, particularly when you think about things uh, you know, in, uh, in, in the Middle East right now, which is very unfortunate. South Africans do not vote for a president. Instead, they elect the 400 members of the National Assembly who go on to vote for a new head of state within 30 days of the general election. And this year, polls indicate the ANC might lose control of the Assembly and the presidency for the first time since democracy began 30 years ago. Incumbent President Cyril Ramaphosa, the leader of the main opposition from the Democratic Alliance, John Steenhausen, Julius Malema, leader of the Economic Freedom Fighters, and MK Zuma, will all feature prominently in the campaigning this month. In related news, South African police are investigating if a former President Zuma's new political party forged supporters' signature to register for the looming national elections. The MK party has been embroiled in legal cases over whether it and Zuma are eligible to contest the May 29th ballot. Guards and landslides across Kenya have killed 181 people since March, with hundreds of thousands forced to leave their homes. The government and Red Cross said on Wednesday as dozens more were killed in neighboring Tanzania and Burundi. Torrential rain and floods have destroyed homes, roads, 
bridges and other infrastructure across the region. The death toll in Kenya exceeds that from floods triggered by the El Nino weather phenomenon late last year. In the central Kenyan town on Mai Mahiu, where at least 48 died in flash floods on Monday, two bodies were recovered from the debris on Wednesday. Kenya Red Cross South Lift Regional Manager Felix Mayo said. Military personnel accompanied by sniffer drugs had joined the search, Mayo said. Earlier on Wednesday, government spokesperson Isaac Maula said that the death toll has risen by 10 to 179. Last year's rains followed the worst drought in large parts of East Africa in decades. In Kitengera, 33 kilometers from Nairobi, Kenya, Red Cross workers were helping to rescue residents whose homes were marooned by flood waters. They were also trying to rescue tourists trapped at camps in Narok, two 15 kilometers from Nairobi, the Kenya Red Cross said on Twitter. Kenya's National Highways Authority said it had closed a section of a highway leading to the city and at least three other roads across the country due to flooding and debris. The disaster prompted Pope Francis to speak out in sympathy with Kenyans during general audience on Wednesday at the Vatican. He said, I wish to express to the people of Kenya my spiritual closeness at this time as severe flooding has tragically taken the lives of many of our brothers and sisters, injured others, and caused widespread destruction.